everyone. Thank you so much for joining our session. My name is Amanda Abram, and I'm very happy to invite you to our session titled ESD Localization in Morocco, Ghana, and Turkey, the launch of the Global Schools Draft Country Reports. We are very excited to launch the outcomes of the Global Schools Pilot Project and our draft country reports, which can be found on the Global Schools website, and we will be sharing the link with it in this chat very soon. So the Global Schools Program is an initiative of the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network in support of UNESCO's Global Action Program on Education for Sustainable Development. And through research and advocacy, we develop the tools, resources, and programs to support schools and educators. Now, one of the biggest challenges of implementing education for sustainable development and global citizenship education is really the process of localization. And to address this challenge, we ran a pilot in three countries, Ghana, Turkey, and Morocco. So during this session, you will hear from the Global Schools Director and leader of the project, Mr. Sam Loney. And afterwards, you will hear from the three country research directors on their individual outcomes participating in the Global Schools Pilot Project. Now, these directors include Professor Mustafa Utsurk, the research direct director from Turkey, Professor Abdul Karim Marzouk, the research director from Morocco, and Professor Richardson Adaimanukum, the lead report writer from Ghana. Now, each speaker will speak for a period of five minutes, and we have a very tight timeline today, so I will jump in in order to make sure that we stay on schedule. So I will call on all of the speakers individually and introduce you, and I ask that everyone that is listening to this session, please put your microphone on mute and write any questions that you might have for the speakers in the chat. So without any further ado, I'm happy to first introduce Mr. Sam Loney. He is the research director for the project and the founder and director of the Global Schools Program, and he's currently based at Oxford University. So Sam Loney, over to you. Sam, you're on mute. Yeah, thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, what an honor it is uh, finally to uh, be really getting the results of this uh, incredible project out. Um, it, it took 18 months and uh, finally to be able to launch the draft report, I think it's fantastic. Um, I will just share my screen for with you guys very quickly and just go through some of the uh, challenges and outcomes of, of, of this project. Uh, can you all see? Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as my colleague Amanda mentioned, uh, the mission of Global Schools is really to support educators and schools in shaping a more uh, sustainable world. And our uh, methodology really is um, combining research, advocacy, uh, and, and monitoring in very specific projects to try and uh, um, essentially uh, work towards this, this goal. And in, in essence, getting good quality education content and curriculum um, in schools um, and classrooms around the world. Um, the challenge that we have in front of us is that, uh, you know, according to UNESCO and many other experts um, who, uh, who look at these issues, the world needs many more uh, of its citizens to have the skills, the attitudes, and the values necessary to tackle the greatest challenges of our time, but also to be able to shape a uh, sustainable uh, future. Uh, but, but what does uh, this really mean? And um, target 4.7 of the Sustainable Development Goals mentions that um, education for sustainable development, global citizenship education, and 21st century skills are really the types of education and the types of um, competencies that enable um, uh, future generations, young people, adults, um, um, to be able to respond to global challenges of the 21st century, but also to be able to actually shape, shape the world in a, in a better, more resilient and more prosperous manner. Um, these are some of the um, competencies that have been, that have been highlighted uh, by experts and by researchers as the most important uh, in being able to create this paradigm. Um, but how do we actually teach them? Um, and, and what do we actually teach? What does this look like on the ground. Um, and I think it's very good that 
uh, ESD has been able to identify these um, uh, core competencies, but for them to actually have an impact and, and, and be uh, effective on the ground, they need to be localized. And that means localizing them to the language of the country and city that they're being taught in, um, and uh, they're being um, asked to be taught in um, to the political and social and cultural context, uh, but also for them to be uh, mapped to the local curriculum. Now, these don't just ensure that they're used as, at, at, at a high degree, but um, more importantly, that they actually have a greater impact. And this is exactly uh, why we try to close the uh, missing solution from this landscape by engaging in a country research project to really take these big global competencies and adapt them to the local circumstances and see how effective they are in the classroom and really to test that hypothesis. And really our, our uh, project had uh, two objectives. One is to localize these competencies, as I mentioned. And the second one was based on those um, uh, efforts, then identify the opportunities and really from that um, to really use the process to build an effective toolkit so that this can be replicated in other countries and lessons can be learned. And so we um, had the privilege of uh, getting three wonderful advisors on board, Professor F Felisa uh, uh, Tibbetts, and Professor Alan Reed and Professor Oren Pismani levy um, And we had uh, the wonderful privilege of partnering with uh, Mohammed VI Foundation for Environmental Protection and al Khwan University in Morocco, Hasatepe University in Turkey, and Millennium Promise and University of Education in Ghana. Uh, these wonderful partners really uh, volunteered and decided to take the project on their own shoulders and really carry it forward um, in, in really be, be uh, adapting um, um, and really living up to the challenge of, of um, uh, localizing of education for sustainable development in their respective countries. And I can tell you it was no easy job. So this is just a quick overview of the, of the countries involved and the institutions within each of those countries. And of course, as you've already been introduced, um, we were very lucky to have incredibly um, uh, eminent and uh, very capable academics at the helm who led this project in each of their, their countries and uh, made sure that uh, the analysis is being done well and that um, it is comprehensive and that it's being um, adapted um, uh, accordingly to local circumstances. And after 18 months, um, these are some of the <laughs> overall dimensions of the project, four advisors, five host institutions, um, three research teams, more than 50 researchers involved, more than 80 stakeholders involved, four languages, as I said, 18 months, six phases, and hundreds and hundreds of data sheets, and I'm sure that many of the uh, researchers on this team will, 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 will um, uh, appreciate how much work has been going to, to making this happen. And finally, we have four draft publications, uh, which are now open for uh, consultation and feedback of many of the experts and participants um, here participating here today. And um, after uh, this period of time, we, we identified some challenges that um, predominantly with capacity, we our teams uh, had really um, had to put up with a major challenge of COVID-19 and logistical issues that created, um, you know, there were challenges with, um, um, you know, standardization and how much flexibility we allow. Um, and, you know, I won't go through all of them because they're more or less outlined in the report. Uh, but at the same time, there were some incredible opportunities, um, both in terms of uh, research, but as well as policy. Um, in that some, we, we, we have not only seen new areas of research inquiry emerging, but actually it's being led to some in interesting policy actions, including um, informing the work and being kind of one of the catalysts for Mission 4.7 and new global um, uh, uh, campaign and project to really accelerate uh, education for sustainable development globally. It has really highlighted the importance of localization in different policy circles, and it has had some direct impacts in uh, uh, Morocco and Ghana at the policy level. And in terms of network opportunities, it has created links between the different stakeholders on the ground and the researchers. And of course, it has strengthened our relationships with uh, the wonderful partners and researchers on the ground who are doing this work. And of course, we have three uh, national 
regional reports um, and one um, global evaluation report. Please note that these are in their uh, first draft form, they're not final, so we do invite um, um, comments and feedback from, from our colleagues and from the participants here. Um, but, but really, um, you can access this early draft form at the Global Schools website. Um, and next steps, obviously, are for us uh, the you know the final report, the implementation roadmap, um, doing some peer review work, um, and also to build a localization toolkit so that these lessons can then be adapted in other parts of the world. And with that, um, I think I will hand over to the other colleagues. But I just really wanted to say that I am extremely thankful to the uh, research teams in each of the countries and to the partners for doing an incredible job, despite very difficult circumstances. They are educators and despite the many, many challenges that have been created because of COVID-19 and as well as other uh, circumstances in their respective countries, they managed to really work extremely hard um, on a volunteer basis to make this project happen. And we are extremely thankful for their work and we're so um, happy to have their work on board because this is really, this was a massive challenge and they managed to uh, make it work uh, despite the, uh, the, the multiple barriers in front of them. So a huge thank you to our partners and of course a huge thank you to the Global Schools team, including um, you know, Amanda and, um, um, and Julia and, and the team who put the uh, Global Schools um, evaluation report together, uh, the first draft of it. So a huge thank you to everyone and we are very, very excited. Uh, to finally have the uh, initial findings from the from the research here, and I'm very very uh, proud of the work that we've been able to do with our wonderful partners on the ground. And with that, I hand over Amanda. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sam. Um, that was really great to get an overview of the methodology and the project, and I'm looking forward to hearing from the rest of the speakers as well. So next, we're going to have um, Professor Mustafa Oturk, the research director from Turkey, and Dr. Mustafa Oturk is an associate professor of curriculum and instruction and an EFL instructor at Hesseptepe University in Turkey, and we're really excited to hear from him and hear his project outcomes. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, uh, Sam uh, briefly summarized the uh, steps, I just want to focus on the overall findings in the project. And we had actually, as Turkish team, uh, we had uh, uh, conducted three main activities, main research activities in the project. First one was policy analysis executed on key policy documents. And the second step was on curriculum mapping which was executed on uh, diverse uh, national curricula in uh, K to 12 levels, and also a preliminary program evaluation on global schools program. Uh, the overall findings reveal that both Turkish and national curriculum and educational policies reflect an adequate level of emphasis on ESD. Even though most of the emphasis happens to be implicit and changes according to uh, certain uh, different subjects as well as different educational levels. Also, the level of attention attached to SDGs highly depends on the thematic representation of a specific e SDG, as well as the content covered in a specific subject. But all in all, global perspectives and goals of ESD find a proper way uh, into the local educational policies and national curriculum in Turkey, but still, there is always a room for improvement, we can say as a main uh, finding. Preliminary program evaluation uh, put forward that the teacher's overall evaluation of the 60 lesson plans of the global schools program is highly positive, as 61% of the program was reported to be suitable to adopt and implement in its current form, whereas the rest 39% could be modified or improved to make lesson plans more local in Turkish settings. Reflecting an adequate level of emphasis on ESD, both Turkish national curriculum and education policies have a potential to generate a national movement for change. This is a remarkable opportunity to lead the country's outstanding change agents and to encourage educators to embrace ESD more fully. Considering the complexity of change processes and the underlying dynamics of such transformations, this opportunity could create a form of ESD leadership that would support and promote sustainability values through a strong commitment 
to participation and collaboration. Regarding the national education policies, the main difficulty is to determine to what extent the sustainability concepts and competencies included in the policies are put into practice. Any decisions or regulations that look great on policy documents or policy papers sometimes cannot be put into practice as planned or desired. For this reason, it is extremely important that policy practitioners as well as policy makers internalize and embrace ESD at the same rate. Only in this way, ESD could evolve in the desired direction and become widespread. As for the curriculum sphere, the main obstacle could be the awareness of the people who design the curriculum. As, seen, as we see in our national curriculum documents, curriculum developers seem to pay sufficient attention to global issues. But if they had more awareness and sensitivity, more sensitivity about certain issues like climate change, gender equality, circular economy, peace, or poverty, they would definitely incorporate those issues more into the curriculum. On the other hand, it also depends on how proactive a teacher is about covering sustainability issues in class. At this point, teachers' awareness of sustainability, sensitivity to sustainability issues, and ownership of all those sustainability issues come into play. Moreover, how competent they are in ESD becomes another significant challenge for us. Teachers are normally expected to go through a professional development process to be able to address a critical subject or a theme of the curriculum sufficiently in the classroom. Therefore, it is highly crucial to focus on whether, they, whether every learning outcome set in the curriculum document would be fulfilled by teachers in the same proportion or direction with a similar level of ownership or commitment and with a desired competence or capacity. While the initial steps of ESD lie in the initiatives of educational policy and curriculum, each competent teacher has an invaluable role in meeting the current challenges. All in all, perhaps one of the biggest challenges of ESD for education sector here in Turkey specifically is not just to teach concrete facts and wicked problems of the earth and the humanity, but rather to create a transformative learning environments and enhance active participation processes that could allow uh, sustainable values to be adopted, experienced, and practiced more widely. Uh, as we believe, ESD is a holistic approach in which learning processes is as important as what is learned. Because ESD intends to go beyond the surface learning, which is usually through transmission methods, and reach a deeper learning process, which could be ensured through transformative methods. Therefore, it is essential to have an educational culture that openly and enthusiastically support the development and dissemination of ESD at schools. The findings from the policy analysis revealed that the concepts of sustainable to development and 21st century skills seem to have more places in the policy documents whereas global citizenship as a concept does not get enough significance in the same documents. Maybe this point could be a, a striking point to improve for further steps. Regarding the curriculum analysis, the top three SDGs that received the highest number of references from the national learning outcomes were related to sustainable cities and communities, good health and well-being, responsible consumption and production, this is an uh, important finding for uh, as the strength of the curriculum. But on the other hand, we have lowest number of references we detected uh, uh, concerning life below water, quality education, clean water and sanitation. And this, uh, uh, the curriculum should give more spaces to such issues, we believe. Since the policy sphere and program sphere have already been reviewed so far, and the practicing teachers have also reflected a positive disposition towards global schools program. Whenever the pandemic allows, the next step would be or could be putting this program into practice across diverse educational settings of the country and getting feedback on the effectiveness of the program, uh, both uh, from both educators as well as students. And 
Finally, I can say, considering the centralized structure of the education system in Turkey, it would be more practical to present this program as a suggested and supplementary program to schools. It would never be appropriate to launch it as an independent program. Instead, it will be embedded into the relevant themes of the existing curriculum. And in this way, it could be appreciated as an opportunity to diversify classroom practices, motivate students about global issues, and most importantly, to collaborate with other institutions or organizations implementing this program around the world. And since teachers in class and out class engagement with ESD is a conscious way of promoting a sustainable world, Global Schools Program could be a valuable program to fill all teachers onward in achieving the 2030-2030 education agenda. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I thank can you. have your questions, I guess, at the end. Yes, thank you so much, Professor. It's really great to hear about your findings and the importance of instilling ownership in teachers and really taking these um, thematic areas into the national curriculum. Um, so yes, questions will be at the end. So now we're going to go to our next speaker which is uh, Professor Abdel Karim Marzouk, the research director from Morocco. Um, Dr. Abdel Karim Marzouk is the Dean of the School of Humanities and Social Sciences and an Associate Professor of Geography at Al Akhaiwan University. And we're really looking forward to hearing your findings. It's over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, so, uh, in my presentation, I would focus on, on three aspects. So, basically, I think we are in the same project that has worked on the policy analysis, the curriculum mapping, and the evaluation of a few samples of courses and see where do we go uh, from here. So, um, my focus first, I will start with uh, what we did in terms of the analysis. So, in terms of the sustainability, which is uh, sustainable development goals in Morocco, uh, they're in line with the spirit and the text of the constitution of the Kingdom of Morocco that was adopted in 2011. Um, so in this commitment, uh, so these goals uh, are reflected also within the country's commitment to global citizenship and education. So uh, the country has long emphasized the idea of community among its students. And in 2003, the Minister of Education added a citizenship element to the overall curriculum. Uh, so just to give you some history here. Uh, so citizenship education is taught between grade four and nine and include themes such as rights and duties. So the government, democracy, corruption, human rights, justice, and peace, etc. So that's the uh, purpose. On the uh, reflecting on the sustainable development goals in the curriculum has proven harder, uh, even uh, even with the education. I mean the uh, SDG four. So the Minister of National Education uh, has a coordinating national community of implementing the SDGs, but it has faced difficulties in coordinating work and in being able to embed it itself within the within the ministry due to its lack of a formal institutional mandate. So the diverse divisions of the SDGs for themselves led to difficulties in coordinating with the other government bodies. So this study basically that we were produced in this report aims to help a little bit to fill the gap between what Morocco is doing and what the curriculum should be about 21st century skills and sustainable development in general. So our reports, basically when we looked at the, uh, the report argues that the Moroccan education Curriculum does include material and language that furthers the country's global citizenship education and 21st century skills and sustainable development commitment. It does so by uh, you know, a survey of material in Moroccan curriculum in which we looked at about 260 books that we looked from the primary, from the middle and the high school. And this project, as you know, we spent about 16 months working on this with overall the material in terms of education policies, law, etc. So we looked into in depth and uh, we find out that, you know, uh, there is a lot of things that Morocco is, is supporting on sustainable de development in its, in its uh, policy, making them uh, in our uh, curriculum. So once we, we complete the policy analysis, we move to the second area, which is, it took a lot of time, which is the curriculum mapping 
basically, but we looked at from grade one to grade 12 and how SDGs appears in those curriculum. Of course, for those of you who have access to the report, you will see that in some area there was focus on SDGs, in some area they're almost absent, in some they're, uh, you know, they're average, but we can see that there is no uh, normal distribution in terms of the focus, uh, depending on the theme, depending on the level, on the grade. So you will find some of the curriculum that are being covered, the way SDGs are covered, some were done not covered, but when you look at the overall distribution, there are touches on those uh, SDGs. We have provided, you know, uh, statistics and data and the, the, the report that give you uh, the details. So without going into uh, the details in terms of the uh, of the mapping, so I think there is kind of sufficient material there for the SDGs. But for sure, our team has gone beyond. Uh, because we think there is much to do. There is much to do for you know implementing the SDGs in our uh, curriculum. So what our team did, so the research team designed a sample of courses in which they included the missing part that we pointed out in the Moroccan curriculum. So the design was based on some deep thinking on, um, on how to complement what was missing and what to add to the existing curriculum. After many sessions, we have our team was extended to about 40 uh, people, experts in the domain. So the scientific team agreed on the sample of courses administered to administer, sorry, after they were re-engineered. So we administered the courses in two different regions in Morocco, which is Rabat Saleh Kenitra, and then uh, Fes Meknes by looking at the primary school in Rabat and basically middle school and high school in the region of Fes Meknes. So the result of the analysis explained in detail in this report were encouraging. So the main objectives of this phase was basically to test the hypothesis that the lessons developed may bring an added value to Moroccan curriculum, and then test the pre-lessons and the post-lessons in different environment in two regions, and then compare the outcome from the pre-lesson and the post-lesson, and then later on decide whether the hypothesis is being supported and can be generalized. And that's the whole purpose of the report. So uh, 12 uh, developed courses were tested via surveys in primary, middle school, and high school. So the results are really encouraging, given that we saw a significant difference in the outcome of the lessons when they are administered to students. So you have, the, uh, you have all the data in the report. So evidence-based results showed that the content, the methodology, and the pedagogy and the participation of students increased significantly. And that's what they want to underline. So students feel at ease to communicate with their families about SDGs, about uh, you know, uh, debate issues related to the environment. So if I want to summarize all what they have said by going through the policy analysis, the curriculum and the evaluation, I think this report, although that it was uh, this, the report basically and the project itself had helped experts in Morocco to, uh, to point out the area where, the, where we're missing things in the curriculum. And then we engineered the new lessons, then we test them and then they were proved there, there is an added value, an extreme value for this project and how students will react to the SDGs get engaged, etc. So all the details are in the, in the report, but we have seen a clear increase while we do the pretest, and that was the purpose of the methodology, is that we do the pretest before the, our students are faced with the lesson that we designed, and then we do a post-test just to make sure that there is an increase in the in the content of the of the, the course, in the, the methodology, the pedagogy, and how our students that were tested to 12 classes they acquired the new knowledge with the new uh, pedagogy. It's not only the content, but also the pedagogy in terms of those classes that were tested. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you so much, Professor. It's an incredible to hear about all the work you did and doing these pre and post tests across um, the primary level, the high school level, as well as the two regions that you mentioned. So thank you so much for your work. And also especially thank you to the Mohammed Six Foundation for Environmental Protection for being an amazing partner organization in this entire project. 
Um, so then I will move on next to our next speaker. Um, so our next speaker is Professor Richardson Adaimanunkum. And he is a professor at the University of Education, Winneba, and has been pioneering this project along with all of the other report writers from Ghana and really has taken the lead on all of the project outcomes and the data that you'll see in the report. So um, over to you, Professor. Thank you very much, Amanda. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, every one of you, and thank you for joining us. Um, Reporting for the Ghana team, I am going to follow the lead of my colleagues and not belabor the point about the purpose of the, of the project. Um, but first I'll need to issue a disclaimer and say that um, unlike our colleagues who were not able to go all the way through, um, I'll highlight why that happened. But even with what we have, we think it's quite exciting that we share so that you know what went on with the Ghana team. Uh, so, the first part of the project was to try to uh, analyze policy documents um, to see how SDGs are, are predominant in them. Uh, in Ghana, it seemed like there's a lot of rhetoric about SDGs, political speeches abound with the comments about SDGs and commitment to promoting them. So for us, we were personally excited to see how these rhetorics are translating into policy documents and in the national uh, curriculum. Um, and so the findings after our extensive analysis of seven policy documents revealed that the document that predates SDGs had little to no mention at all of SDG concepts, uh, which is not too surprising because they predate SDGs. Uh, but we found at least four of the documents that um, were promulgated after SDGs, mostly in 2018, 2019, uh, containing some concepts and, and, and terminologies that we searched for. Um, and so we were very excited to see them, although we will have to say that not much uh, were observed. There were a couple of explicit mentions and a number of implicit mentions, but I wouldn't say overall these policies uh, are, are, are largely containing SDG concepts and, um, and terminologies. They are not mostly there. And so we see that there's more room for improvement in um, the fashioning of our policy documents to ensure that the SDG contents are in there. Uh, we also looked at the curriculum of basic schools from K kindergarten to grade six. Um, the reason we ended at grade six was that the grade seven to 12 curriculum is currently under review. And so we were just waiting for it to be done, or maybe there's an opportunity there that I'll speak about later. Um, and so we concentrated on the kindergarten to grade six. And we observe, interestingly, that a lot of the subjects did not contain the learning objectives of the um, SDGs. The 255 learning objectives of SDGs, we try to map the curriculum uh, to them to see which one were pervasive and which one were salient. Um, surprisingly, majority of the 11 school subjects that we, we analyzed did not have much of SDG ideas in the curriculum, except for one subject called Our World and Our People. Uh, interestingly, this subject is fairly new. It's a new subject that has just been introduced. And just as the name suggests, Our World and Our People, it is pretty much containing a lot of concepts um, um, of SDGs. And so out of the 255 uh, learning objectives, 179 could be found in this curriculum. And we found that very impressive. But the remaining subjects had a um, percentage range of 47, 44 to 1.2, which was quite low. Surprising subjects like science and physical education and computing, where we're expecting to see a lot of these SDG learning objectives there, they were literally not found there, which we found very disappointing. Um, and when we looked at the particular SDGs, which ones were, were covered and which ones were not covered, we realized that SDG three, good health, SDG one, no to poverty, SDG four, quality education were pretty much covered. Whereas SDG 10, reducing inequalities, surprisingly wasn't covered much. SDG 12, responsible consumption was barely there. 
and SDG 5 life below the water was virtually non-existent in the curricula. So following this, we're, um, by the project um, plan, we were to form a national advocacy committee, which we started, we were able to confirm the participation of 18 of our people. Uh, we were just left with three uh, key people that were supposed to confirm their participation. Uh, but unfortunately, we couldn't move beyond there because COVID hit us so hard. And coupled with that, we had a national election, which kind of uh, put us in suspense for a while. And so even the key government people to include in the advocacy committee could not um, be determined until after the election. And so unfortunately, we couldn't progress beyond this point of advocacy and trying out the curriculum. But we're still very committed to completing the process. Although the 18 months span is done, we are thinking of restarting it even after the project is done. And hopefully we'll come out with the findings for the other phases of the project. Um, we are seeing opportunities in Ghana for this to actually make a bit more impact than what we are sharing here. Currently, the curriculum in Ghana is going under, undergoing review and it's a national curriculum, it's centralized. And so what we are hoping to be able to do with our advocacy committee is to push for the inclusion of uh, these SDG ideas and concepts in there. And we are very hopeful that we could get our committee to do some advocacy in this light so that the reviewed curriculum will actually uh, do better than what we have worked on. We are also hoping that the national uh, committee will also advocate for the um, repromulgation of the old old policy documents. At least three documents that predates 2015, we found them to be very old and not abreast with SDG. And so we are hoping that we could make our advocacy committee work to advocate for the promulgation of newer policy documents to replace the existing ones um, so that SDG could be largely covered. So for the Ghana team, we are about two more phases behind, but we're still committed to completing it, although the official timeline is done. But what we've done so far has all been communicated in the draft report that has been shared, and I hope that you'll find it useful. Thank you very much for doing that listening, and have a good evening, morning, and afternoon. Thank you so much, Professor, for sharing your findings and especially your in-depth analysis of your K through six education and the new courses that are in Ghana. So we're just going to jump into two very quick questions for all of you today. Um, and so my question, if you could just answer this maybe in one minute each um, and I'll cut you off. Um, so my question is, has the Ministry of Education really acknowledged and appreciated the um, kind of the influence of the SDGs in the national curriculum? Have you seen um, any movements as far as at the national policy level based on your work? So we'll go over to Professor Mustafa Utzer, please, for one minute. Sorry, could you please repeat it again? I think yeah. I missed the question. Yes, I will rephrase it. I apologize. Um, so what has been kind of the response at the national policy level um, by the Ministry of Education in response to integrating the SDGs and your work? Okay, actually, we, we, we didn't get such a response. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not working for the government and I'm not affiliated with the Ministry of Education. I'm an academic. And so I'm doing it just for research purposes. But of course, we, we, we just uh, corresponded with them during the process. Uh, and uh, since they have uh, more urgent issues about COVID, uh, this is not their priority for the time being as far as I, I can understand. Thank you so much. Um, Professor Morzouk. Yes, thank you, Amanda. I think uh, our case, we just finished the, the report. So uh, we were very lucky because in our team, we have people from the uh, Ministry of Education. Uh, and I think we, uh, as I said before in the project, I think it's something that we will hear from them and how we did appreciate our work and that we, where we can take it from there. We just finished two weeks ago or less than a week ago. So our colleague, they may be in this call, but I think we, we will, they will read the final product and then get us to the, uh, 
to the ministry because the project should not stop here. It needs an implementation. I agree with you, and I think that was an interesting question from the chat. So it's interesting to hear all of your perspectives. Um, Professor um, Adai Manunkum. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Um, for us, in fact, that is what got us stalled at the committee level. We actually wanted to include persons from the ministry uh, so that whatever we discuss from there will be carried through. And we are still committed to doing that. Uh, we couldn't get that far. And so officially we haven't communicated with policymakers, but I know because I've also been involved in the uh, curriculum reform in Ghana. And I know that issues about global citizenship are key on the agenda, except that there hasn't been that special focus on SDG. And that is what we are hoping to champion. I know the minister personally is interested in SDG. And so the response is going to be great, although we haven't gotten to that step yet. Thank you so much. Um, Sam, over to you. Yeah, um, once again, thank you so much for uh, the incredible presentations. Um, it's always very difficult to try and summarize uh, 18 months of work into a few minutes. Um, and hopefully that the, the draft reports will do some justice and then the follow-up work that we do will also out outline those in detail. Um, but I just want to re-emphasize that what an incredible work our teams have done despite the immense pressure on the um, on on their on their uh, them and their uh, respective ministries and on the circumstances on the ground, especially because of COVID nineteen, and I guess my final question, maybe very shortly from 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 each um, representative, is what would you say was the most positive? If you had to identify one very positive outcome of this entire process, uh, whether um, a, in terms of uh, you know, better research relationships, uh, better gaps, and you know, essentially an opportunity that came along because of this process, uh, what would you say it would be? So I will just uh, maybe uh, put the question to, to the rest of the panel. Professor Ertsuk, you can go ahead. Yeah, okay, uh, I think I will uh, take it on two, uh, on two things. Uh, first, just to reinforce maybe the question you just asked or to give some feedback, is, is that the, uh, the, uh, school of the humanities at the, uh, at the School of the Humanities and Social Science, we took some uh, leadership to, uh, to link something to this project about SDGs. And we have just produced, uh, if you can see this, so these are short stories for kids for this is one and this is the second one. They're all based on SDGs. So this is a series of, of short stories based on the uh, project itself. So yeah. the, the idea from the project where we will get those stories to a student to in, in, uh, in um, primary school and middle school and high school. So we will be uh, producing something like uh, 15 or 16 uh, you know, short stories, print distributes to the school as a contribution of IUI to SDGs. So students were asked to write creative writing, but it's about SDGs. So that's for the uh, first part. I think what was, uh, what Sam uh, asked in terms of uh, what was, uh, if you want to call it amazing about this project, I think it was, it was an excellent project because it's a reflective one. Reflective, reflective on the policy, reflective on the curriculum, and also practical aspect in terms of implementation. Means that, yes, there is a problem, how to face it. I think it gets the, uh, the project management side of it being practical, being something that you can implement, and then something that, go, that can go up uh, in, uh, in scale. And also for the first time that they have heard of a project where you're bringing people from different administration together working about one single but very sensitive issues, especially when you have, uh, you know, uh, a curriculum that's a countryside curriculum that's if you have it everywhere, wherever you go, it's kind of centralized curriculum, it becomes very difficult compared to countries where you have a regional curriculum. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Professor Osterk, do you have anything to add to that? Sorry, 
Yeah, I just want to thank uh, my colleagues, uh, six researchers that contributed to a bigger, the biggest part of the work, the academicians from Hajitepe University and Gazi University. Uh, they, they worked a lot in curriculum mapping process and contributed to the reporting. Also, I would like to thank 25 teachers, practicing teachers who contributed to the program evaluation se uh, section. Uh, I cannot uh, read their names here because it's a big team. I would like to thank all of them and their names are written on the report. Yeah. And many thanks to them on our side as well. Um, I know you all did a great work on the report. Uh, Professor um, Adai Manukum. Yeah, thank you very much. I think the most exciting part of this work has been, as my colleagues said, a reflection. Uh, so we took it at the university level and asked ourselves, how are we as a university also um, assessing our curriculum in this regard? And we were very um, much surprised by the feedback that we got from our colleagues. We shared the ideas with our colleagues and our um, we now have a department that has actually introduced a program on SDG, uh, school curriculum and SDG. And it's all inspired by this work that we did. We, we shared a report initially. And so our colleagues have picked it up and people are now asking themselves, what can we also do in our department? And so it has been a great, a great um, eye opener for all of us. And it's given us opportunity to reflect on what we can also do at our level beyond what we will ask the policymakers to do. So. We're very happy about that. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your amazing presentations. We have many questions, but of course, we're a little bit over time. Um, so we encourage everyone that has raised questions in the chat to email us at globalschools at unsdsn.org, and you will find that email in the chat as well. Um, we are, once again, so excited to launch the draft country reports. All of those can be found on the Global Schools website, and the specific PDF links have also been shared in the chat. We also encourage anyone that has the full access to the UNESCO conference to go to the Global Schools and the SDSN and SDG Academy booth, um, where we'll have a lot of other resources hosted for you to check out. So um, thank you, everyone. And um, please follow up with feedback and comments on the reports. We'd love to hear them. Thank you very much. And have a great rest of your time at the conference as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Yes. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.